Hi and welcome to the third video in the marketing strategy course and this is on the simple topic of validation. So let's do a quick recap of what we've covered so far. Your strategy is a plan that you set out um, to help you achieve an objective and you do that before you start work. You don't strategize as you go, you decide it and then you start and review occasionally. It starts with the question, where are we now? Telling the truth about the present situation. Then you say, where do we want to go? And of course you have lots of choice about that. And then the, the main part of the strategy is how will we get there? How will we get to that point where we want to go starting from here? And um, that obviously contains your, you know, what channels we're going to use to reach people and, and everything else. We're going to break all of that down in later sessions. So that's, that's the basics of, um, of what we're doing here. And we're in a phase now after telling the truth about where we are, we are now thinking expansively, right? So we're saying, okay, what are our options? We don't have to put anything down specifically in stone just yet okay and that's important so really the 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 purpose of your strategy in marketing marketing is is selling is to figure out what needs to happen in order to achieve the objective that, we, that you've got and there's basically two steps you need to find the people who need what you offer and convince them to say yes if you can do that for enough people um, for the right cost, so it's got to be profitable, um, then you've, you know, you, you're off to the races. You've got something to sell. And that's really the, the, the point of what we're doing today. So now we know where we want to go and we can start to plan how to get there, right? No, wait, stop. Right? We don't start yet because it may be that your, the strategy that seems to be laid out in front of you is not a strategy that you should do. Okay, it's not time to start planning yet. You've got to do the single most important thing, the most important part of your whole strategy is validate your theory. Your theory says, we think that there's a market for this thing and that we can sell that profitably. And it could be a mistake to rush off now and start building stuff based on that theory. Because remember, you know, we haven't started to lay bricks yet, right? We're still working in our heads. We're still working on paper. Things can be changed very easily now and easily means cheaply. When you start putting things and building things, then anything that you need to change at a later point is going to be extremely expensive compared to making a change right now. So what do we mean by validate? It's answering the question, do we have something that's ready to take to market? Do we actually have a, a whole marketable case or you know your overall proposition? Um, so how can we actually figure that out? Is it likely to succeed? You know, if, if we go to market this, if we take this thing to market, are we going to make money and thereby achieve our objective or whatever our objective is? Or is it possible that we could fail? Is it likely that we could fail? And yes, there are ways that you can figure that out before you start. Another question that you can ask is, could it be better? Are we actually thinking big enough? Are we being bold enough? Or are we playing small? Are we thinking too narrow? at this point, which is, you know, not, not a great idea um, and automatically assuming that the direction in which we're heading, that, you know, the path that we have been on for however long is the, the path that we need to stay on. Have we considered other options? So it's faster, cheaper and easier to consider all these questions now before you start actually trying to figure out the details of a strategy or start to roll it out so you can breathe yeah we can take time there's no rush you can stop right if it's not the right time to make a decision don't make a decision 
you know, reflect. That's really the essence that I want you to get from this particular video. Ready? Okay. So, validation actually helps us in, in many ways. And so what I mean by this is that you are really clear about your, your brand, what you're selling, who you're selling it to, right, before you start. <clears throat> One of the, the, the great things is that it helps you to navigate the jungle of marketing options and channels and tools and methods out there. You simply cannot do every technique that's out there, right? If you try and write a best-selling book, run your own pay-per-click ads, run Facebook ads, do, you know, viral this, that, and the other, and launches and funnels and all this kind of great stuff, you're almost guaranteed to burn yourself out or burn through all your money in super quick time. You simply can't do it all, and you particularly can't do it all well. The good news is that you don't need to do it all. Marketing is about doing simple things well, just like business. And um, when you have properly validated and understood and really taken on board and got your head around exactly what it is that you want to do, then it makes the choices um, a lot simpler because the, it's, it's actually, and we will be going through this quite a lot more, but when you are clear about what you're selling, who you're selling it to, and what their problem is, for example, the, the shape of the relationship between them and you will have a natural kind of form. And there will be natural things that will fit with that, and there will be other things that aren't a fit with that, right? Um, timing is particularly important. I'll we'll find, you know, um, thinking about the technology adoption curve, for example, if you're launching something that's radical, really new, then you will be addressing the innovator and early adopter market, right? Um, and when you do that, you need to market to those people in different ways. Um, you may have a market where people don't know what their problem is, right? So they actually need to be educated about their problem. In that kind of case, what we find is they're not on Google typing, how do I solve the problem? Right? So SEO is, doesn't work. Pay-per-click doesn't work. You have to go out and find those people. Okay. So when you understand what exactly what you're doing, who you're doing it for, everything else, you can much more easily, far more easily spot, okay, these things we can ignore because it isn't a fit for what we want to do, right? That makes your life a lot, lot easier. Also, kind of paradoxically, because, you know, we're saying stop, reflect, make changes now before we start, sometimes you can't know it all. There are things that you just cannot know. Um, however, if you are cognizant, right, of the things that you do not know, if you know what you don't know, then you can plan for that, right? You should and can know the most important things. If you don't know the, you know, the really critical core central things to your whole marketing proposition and, and strategy, your campaign, then you shouldn't be, <laughs> you shouldn't be starting, right? You've got to know, you know, what you're doing. Um, there may be other details that are unknowns, but if you know what the unknowns are, you can then plan for how you're going to fill the gaps in your knowledge later as part of your campaign. So what we're talking about is building in discovery into your strategy. So if there's something that you're not sure, you know, how much will people pay or how likely are they to take this kind of action, then you, what you need to do is plan. Well, how can we test for that and test for it as cheaply as possible? A couple of ideas to come later on. Although we are in expansive thinking mode, also paradoxically, I want you to, to think about narrowing, right? Um, niching, focusing, on the particular thing that you can embody and represent and stand for and be the world's champion for, right? if at all possible. The facts are always your friends. 
Okay, so knowing the uh, having ans asked all the questions about the key things that make up a campaign, which we'll be looking at, um, you can tell the truth. The truth will set you free. And then you can move on with more confidence, even if the facts aren't what you'd like them to be. Still telling the truth and knowing the facts is always helpful. And yes, as we said, the nature of this, the, the offer or campaign or strategy that, that we're trying to put together um, will help you to, de to determine what tactics or channels or techniques may or may not be appropriate. And the circuit which we're going to run through is the, the best model that I've ever come across for understanding or evaluating any marketing proposition. In fact, it, it goes way beyond marketing as well. So here's the circuit, five elements, starting from the left, the brand, that's you, right? Who, who is doing the selling? Who are we buying from, right? So buying from Amazon is one thing, buying from an Amazon marketplace seller is another, Apple is another, uh, lots of different ways in which you can sell or lots of different things that you can be. Um, and I, I'm a, a huge advocate that thinking creatively about what you choose to be in your campaign can make a massive difference, right? The product is what you actually deliver to your customers. And this may be a product, it may be a service, or it may even be an idea that you're selling, but generally products and services, but we'll bundle them together for simplicity, call it product. The proposition is what they actually buy. Because you can take one thing and you can sell it in, in multiple ways. We, we find the same product, the same actual product being packaged differently and sold differently. You know, this pen may be sold under different names in different countries, right? Um, the, the thing that's actually delivered is the same. The product is the same, you know, the, the atoms are together, but it could be sold differently. It could be sold at diff for different prices in different contexts, okay? So it's important to understand the distinction between the thing that, you a that actually gets delivered and what you buy, because the proposition is actually a promise to solve your problem. So if I'm dashing through an airport and it says, you know, here, you know, grab a pen, it's two pounds, and I'll, I'll grab a pen so I can do my Sudoku on the plane or whatever, that's, that's you know, two pounds. It's solving my problem right there and then. If I'm in a, a different context, um, then that pen for two pounds may not be worth it for me, right? It's a different proposition, different time and place, different context. Uh, what is the problem that you're solving? And then finally, who is buying going to buy from you? Who is your market? That's the people who've got that problem. So the single most important thing, I think, in this whole session, in possibly in the whole of marketing, is I think this for me right now. A viable strategy matters far more than tactics. And this works two ways. If you know and you are clear and you understand who you are, what you're selling, what problem you're solving, who you're solving it for, and how, why they need it, that's the proposition, um, then it's pretty, I, I think that whatever tactics you choose to use may cease to be so relevant. I think that you will if you, if you know there's a market, if you know that what you offer is better than competition, if you can prove it, if your product is great and you're great, then it should sell. It's just the case of putting it in front of people. Um, on the other hand, if you've got a, a crummy proposition or you don't know who you're sell, selling to and you don't know where they are, then you could, you know, run out of money. So... It works both ways. If, if you've got a great strategy that you know is viable, and that's what we're testing today, right? Then tactics, channels, tools, methods become less important. And on the flip side of that, if you haven't got a viable strategy, then it really doesn't matter what channels and tactics and tools and methods you use because they probably won't be able to save you. 
right? Now, it's not quite as simple as that, but really try and you know get this into your head that that starting out when you've got something amazing to sell. Um, was it Gary Gary Halbert? I think it is, who used to do a marketing lecture, and um, he would say to his students, "Okay, right. Well, we'll have a do a, a thought project. Okay, um, thought experiment. We've all got a burger van." Um, I've got one, you've got one, everyone's got their own burger van, and you all get to say um, what advantages or benefits or features you would want for your burger van that are going to make you outsell me. And people would throw out their ideas and they'd say, smart uniforms, big signage, all organic ingredients, or, you know, something to blow the smell out into the, you know, street and whatever, and, and Gary would go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, great ideas, great ideas, all wrong. He said, because my advantage will trump all your advantages, all right? Doesn't matter what they are, mine wins. So he says, my advantage is what I've got that you haven't got is a starving crowd. If you've got a burger van, right, and you've got a starving crowd, you're going to sell a whole heap of burgers. Simple as that, okay? Starving crowd means there's enough people and they really, really want what you offer and they know it's gonna solve their problem, okay? So, in that situation, it doesn't matter what tactics you use. You can double your prices, you know? You'll still be selling burgers as far as you can hand them out if you've got a starving crowd. Yep, moving along. Now, what you want with the circuit is you want each of these things to be strong, clear, right? fixed, knowable. If you find a situation where you can say, yeah, my brand is this, my product is this, my proposition, my problem I'm solving is that, and this is my market, okay, simply, clearly, you probably got yourself a good proposition, a good, you know, case to go to market. It will be relatively easy to put a strategy together around that. If, however, any of these pieces are missing. This is why it's called the circuit. The idea is that you have to have all the pieces slotted in place and then you know the current can go through and energy can, can happen, right? If there's bits missing, you're like, well, what problem are you solving? I don't know. Well, don't, don't try and sell, you know, do not go to market if you don't know what problem you're solving. Who are you selling it to? Not quite sure, right? Um, all very, very important. You can have a weak proposition. You could have identified the problem. If the product doesn't solve the problem, then how are you going to sell that? Right? You need to find a different problem or a different product. So this is one of the cool things. You can, you can fiddle with this. You can, you can tweak this. You can change your mind about who you are, about what you sell, what problem you're solving, how you're selling it, who you're selling it to. All these things right now, if you're not actually selling today, you can change them. And that's, that's the really good news. But if you've got a situation like this on the image, where the, you know, you might have a strong brand and a great product and the, you know, fairly good proposition, but the problem's a little bit iffy and, you know, the market's off somewhere else, you know, out of sight, shouldn't be selling. So let's just break down these, these things down pretty, and just try and make, make them easy and understandable for you. The brand is who is making the offer. And the key question to that is, why should I trust you or why should I believe and trust you? Right Now, this may be vitally important. It may be less important. It, again, it depends on, on the context. But, um, you know, if, if I'm telling you that the thing that I am selling here is what you need, you've got every right to say, great, who are you? Why should I believe you? There's a reason why they get dentists to do toothpaste adverts, you know, because you see a white coat, you think, oh, authority. Okay. So, you know, we need to be thinking about what do we need to show people to get their trust? What do we need to be to gain their trust? Okay. Very simply, we're not going to go too deep into it at this point. The product itself, that's the thing that's actually delivered. That's the box that arrives at your address or it's the hours of service that you get, right? If you go for an aromatherapy massage, the aromatherapy massage hour 
is the product that you actually get. Could be product, could be service, could be a mix of product and service. And the key question for the product is, what will it do for me? Right? We distinguish here as well between a, a feature and a benefit. Features don't sell stuff so often, right? Um, your feature is, what does it do? Benefit is, what does it do for me? It connects the feature to me, right? And it's, we will respond emotionally to benefits. We understand benefits, right? Um, it, unless it's a, a very functional technical thing, then quite often features alone are not enough to sway somebody into a making a positive mind decision saying yes. The proposition is actually the solution that you sell. It's not the product or service or combination, right? So, you know, if I buy, if I go on Groupon, I see a relaxing spa break for two, okay? I'm not, I'm buying a relaxing spa, spa break for two, right? And I'm buying, the first word in that is relaxing. I'm buying relaxing. I'm buying the romantic break. Okay, now, where is that relaxing? Where is the romantic break? Well, it's, you know, it's not actually a thing, right? The thing is hotel room, you know, massage and spa and a meal and a bottle of wine. Okay, they're, they're all things that you can point to. They're the products and services. But the proposition is relaxing spa break for two. Do you see the difference? Right, so what? that's what you buy. You're not buying the components, you're buying the solution to your problem. My problem is, we need a weekend away, right? We need to unwind, so we buy a relaxing spa break for two, right? That's the solution to our problem. The proposition is a promise to solve a problem, right? If it's called relaxing, that's the promise. This will be relaxing, problem solved. And the brand and the product support the proposition. The proposition is the, you know, it's, it's the middle one of the five elements. And this is where your market with their problem meets you and your product, right? Comes together with a proposition. This is the interface. This is where the spark happens, right? And the brand and the product are there to support that. I could buy a, a relaxing spa break for two and find that actually what's delivered isn't exactly what's on the ad, but that might be okay if I still get the relaxing spa break for two. Okay, so the product could be interchanged. I could be say, oh, I'm sorry, we've had a flood and we need to move you to this other hotel, but it's just as good. Fine. Different brand, fine. Change the brand. All right, so all of this stuff supports the proposition. The proposition is the thing that you buy. And what motivates you to buy is <clears throat> solution to your problem. And like we said, we can sell the same product actually in many, many ways. I could sell an hour of consulting as lots of different things. Now, I will coach you too. I will do this. I will do that. You go on Fiverr, I will build you know, this kind of thing for you. And all of that stuff is a chunk of time from a person who's got particular skill. You can sell that chunk of time as lots and lots of different things. So the important thing to get into your head is the product or service that you sell is not what you sell. You sell a proposition, okay? Oh yeah, and the key question, and the key question for this is why should I choose this, right? Why, so I, if I, I understand what the product is, right? I understand what my problem is. Why should I choose this? What, how, explain to me how this thing solves my problem. Okay? And it's got to be worth it. Right? So in the uh, secret of uh, selling anything, well, Harry Brown, he says that every transaction has a buyer and a seller. And, but both are exchanging. Right? If I go and buy a MacBook, right? and it's 1,500 pounds, I value the MacBook more than I value the 1,500 pounds, but the guy in the Apple store values the 1,500 pounds more than he values the computer, okay? If that isn't true in both sides of the transaction, there ain't gonna be a transaction. Each party has to value what they are receiving more than what they are giving up, okay? So, 
the proposition, right, it's going to have a, a requirement from me. I'm going to have to invest most often money, possibly time, possibly attention, okay? Um, possibly even just my personal contact details, right? All things that you can spend, and they all have value. Um, so I need to be absolutely clear that what I'm going to receive um, for that is more valuable to me than what I'm being asked to give up. Okay, simple as. If, the, if you can do that, you've got a proposition. Simple as that. The problem, very important. Could also um, apply to an opportunity. Sometimes you use these interchangeably. Um, but, you know, quite often what, what you find is that the opportunity is a, still a solution to a problem. So an investment opportunity is a solution to the problem of how can you make more money either quicker, more safely, whatever. Okay. The romantic spa break for two is a solution to the problem of, you know, you're stressed, you want to treat your spouse. Okay. So problems are very motivating. If you haven't got the problem, you're not going to have motivation. So knowing your problem the problem that you solve, or the multiple problems that you solve, um, gives you the key to your market's motivation, gives you leverage over that market. Key question, why should I act? Why should, why should I take any action at all? And very often, you know, if you've got a situation where you've, you've identified their problem, you've shown them that, that your product could solve it, but the problem isn't that bad, or it's not urgent, or I don't need to do anything today, you're not going to make a sale. Or it's not really worth it, you know, I, I can live with it. You, you haven't got a sale there. So what you need to be asking yourself is, why should they act? Okay, you need to act for this reason, these reasons. Because if you don't then, this is going to get worse. Um, and very often what we find is that our one of our major competitors in making a sale is nothing at all, right? It's just simply not taking action. So you need to treat that as a direct competitor in, in, the, in the marketplace. And then finally, the market. Who is, who is buying from you, right? This is the group of people or businesses or, you know, um, who have that problem. So the problem and the market are intimately related as well. This is the community of people who have the problem that you solve and you know when when you can identify what the the problem is um, you you know where they are you tell them the problem they should buy from you okay here's the key question for market can we reach enough people affordably? It might be great to know that actually we've got a solution um, you know, we need to sell 10 a month in order to be profitable. And there's a market of millions of people out there, right? But you need, still need to be able to reach those people and go through the sales cycle and make profit. Okay. So it really does come down to this. Not only are there enough people to buy the product, enough people who need it, so they have the problem, to support our business, um, but can we reach them at all? Do we know where they are? Do they congregate somewhere? And can we do that in a cost-effective manner? Sometimes, you know, you, you may know that, oh, it, we just, 10 CEOs, that's all we need to sell to. But how, you know, how can you reach even 10 CEOs affordably? That's the question you need to solve. So, a couple of uh, areas on market research. We're just going to dive in and do something. So, I'm going to, we'll take a case study. I have a, I have a friend who is selling or about to start selling a solution for pain. Okay. Now, pain is one of the best problems that you can get. We quite often talk about in marketing what is the pain point? Okay. For that problem, how do you make that problem motivating? Uh, physical pain is a great one. She actually helped me with uh, tennis elbow and using EFT, which is a kind of uh, acupressure tapping technique that you that you go through. 45 minutes, I'd had tennis elbow for six years and it went in one session, one 45-minute session, okay? Um, 
So it's an amazing technique and she has her own approach to doing this. So let's try some quick and dirty market research. We are simply addressing the, the, the fundamental question, is there a market? Does anyone need this? Does anyone have the problem that we're solving? Okay. And there's a, a few tools out there. A simple Google search can do it. You can look at the Google Keyword Planner and you can also just use good old common sense. So we'll start with a simple Google search and I'm going to, I'll do lower back pain. Okay, because that's one of the problems a lot of people get We're sitting down a lot of the time and uh, back pain is starting to become kind of epidemic in the West. So let's dive into Google and we will have a look at, uh, you know, lower back pain. Okay, lower back pain. They say Google already knows it. I've done a search and I can see, the f see what we're looking for, add, add, add. Right, I have three ads right there straight away at the top. And um, this is Google's now removed the ads from the side here. So, you know, we know that there are three companies bidding right now for um, those positions on Backpack. So I'm just going to sign into the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Now I'm not spending my own money on AdWords at the moment, but yeah, I'm still signed up. I have an active account with the AdWords Keyword Planner. I'm gonna search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. Okay, lower back pain. So really the, the the fact that we've seen that there are people who are willing to bid money to get clicks for lower back pain means that there is a market for lower back pain because it means there's at least three advertisers out there who know that if they bid a certain amount of money for this thing, then they can make more on average than they've paid for each click back. Okay, so if, if one out of 20 people who clicks on that ends up buying their product, then you know we can say that they can they are selling that thing for like 20 times more than they've paid for the click at least. Look at this. Okay, lower back pain. According to Google, it's only giving me a it's giving me a very broad range these days, 100,000 to a million searches per month for that phrase. And it's even telling me about others like sciatica, neck pain, lower back pain relief. 10 to 100,000 people a month, okay? Back pain relief, and then you, you can really dig down into this. Now, and that's saying, this is, because I'm in the UK, it's giving me this in pounds, that's one pound 78. Um, that's two dollars something per click. So we know that these people who were bidding on that, they are willing to pay one pound 78 roughly, okay? Um, Generally, you'll you'll end up actually paying less than the suggested bid, but you know they are probably uh, willing to spend in the region of one pound seventy eight, about you know two dollars twenty five, something like that, um, for that for that click, for as many clicks as you can give them for that thing, which means they are making a profit of more than that amount on each person that visits. Okay, so really quick and dirty other stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's do lower left back pain. Okay, remember one pound seventy-eight for lower back pain. Lower left back pain. Still, ten to, between ten and hundred thousand people per month searching on that. Okay, and the suggested bid has gone down. Now that's interesting because so we've now well, it's at one seventy-eight. So it's almost like a third less to go lower left back pain than it is to go for back pain. So um, if you've read Convert, uh, Convert talks a lot about that. We talk about the, um, the multiplicity approach where you narrow, you, you go very specific about specific things. You've got, lower, you've got pain in the lower left part of your back. Well, you know, that often means this and you know, there are, here are things you should check out. Um, if it's like that, you should go and see your doctor, but you know, try this technique first, okay? And you can get clicks for that, still lots of traffic, 
for a lot less than if you're going for lower back pain. Um, and back pain, you see here, going for the broad one, 286. So that's like more than 50% more than lower back pain. So, you know, there are very, very good reasons why we say narrow your focus. You don't want to be draining the whole swamp. You don't want to be dredging the whole river and pulling up everything that's in there. You want to be going. Um, it's, it's almost a cheat. You know, the more specific you can be in your ads and your keywords that you go for. And this applies to SEO um, as well as for paid uh, advertising with pay-per-click as well. Because you get less competition the more specific you get with SEO as well. But I digress. So that's just very, very quick and dirty uh, market research. Okay, so done a very quick Google search, literally sanity check. You know, is anyone advertising for that? And is there stuff on the web for that? Yes, there is, of course. Uh, Google, Google Keyword Planner, and also Common Sense, right? Sometimes you have a market where, as we mentioned before, um, people aren't aware yet that this opportunity is, exists, or they're not really conscious about their problem. But if you say to them, um, like I saw, I saw one of those ads on the internet today. It said, scratching this part of your body can be a sign of dementia or Alzheimer's, I think it was. And, uh, you know, that's a, a perfect example. Oh, wow, do I do that? You know, the old classic, do you make these mistakes in English ad, right? Very, very old. But that's the kind of ad that makes you go, oh, I wonder if I do make those mistakes, you know? So sometimes your market isn't aware of the problem yet, and that's okay. You can still sell to people who aren't aware of the problem, but you can't sell to them with pay-per-click. Because then no one's going into Google saying, do I make these mistakes in English? Because they haven't thought of the problem. Okay, So that's where common sense comes in. Can you tell me what problem you're solving? Can you tell me who your market is, how big it is, and where you're going to find them? Right? Do these people congregate in any place? So, if you've, got, if you've got an issue like that, um, where it's not a conscious problem, you have to go to those people. You have to put your message where they are, where they're going to walk past. So that could be a billboard, a magazine ad, a, a display ad on a website. It could be through email um, or through social media. There are still lots and lots of ways to do it, but pay-per-click for, for certain and SEO aren't going to be methods. Okay, so that's our quick and dirty market research. Let's talk quickly about some quick and dirty market testing. This is if you're pretty sure you've got a market for this thing you think you want to sell. Remember, we can change all these things before we start, right? Um, but you'd like to find out. So I'm, I'm going to give you uh, three suggestions at this point. One is a smoke test. This comes from the uh, you know, lean startup approach. Um, definitely worth looking into. Um, Smoke test is literally, you. it's like you put up the facade of an offer. Um, in fact, all these methods are, are doing a similar thing. You're, you're, you're literally just, you know, you take a bit of string, you put a worm on it, you put it in the water to see if anything bites, right? Before you go out and invest in all your fishing kit. So an example of a smoke test might be, uh, you put out an ad for um, whatever it is <laughs> that, that you're selling. So, you know, how to get rid of back pain in whatever minutes. And literally, you, and you, you'll, pay, you'll pay Google. Now, very often, um, remember we talked about the things that you don't know and how you're going to discover the things that you don't know. Um, it's absolutely valid way to use pay-per-click uh, and social media and, and other channels as a research tool. Don't just think about making each click profitable. Very often, particularly when you start, you're in the business of buying market intelligence from Google or Facebook or whomever. Okay, so if you put an ad up saying, um, you know, try this five-minute trick for getting rid of your lower left back pain, and all you do is you put it, you put a short video up on on the page, and maybe a uh, a box where people can put their email address okay that's that's it you do it it takes you a couple of hours literally um, just you know to put the page up with a short video talking through it um, 
it's not going to have a very high quality score, but you know, for, for sake of argument, and you, you, you throw some money at it, and you say, Google, find me people. Is You've told me that there's however many, ten to 100,000 people a month searching for lower left back pain. Great. Let's actually find out. So you put it in, put it in for maybe a low, a low bid, whatever, find out how much you actually have to bid for those clicks. And so you're finding out two things. Well, several things. Is anyone searching for it? When they search for it, will they click on an ad that promises to solve it? When they come through to the page, how likely are they to put their contact information into the thing? So you may be promising them, you know, put your email address in and I'm going to send you a series of three videos, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, how likely are they to take any action at all? So it doesn't have to be a slick page. It doesn't have to be, you know, look like a, a fully professional medical website, or, although it's a lot quicker and easier nowadays to make a page look nice with lots of landing page builders uh, than it maybe used to be a few years ago. So that's basically the smoke test, right? It's a very, very quick and dirty method just for finding out, is there a market? Is anyone likely to take action? And you can do, you could do that for a hundred, you know, a few hundred dollars. Right, which is so much better, so much better than investing, you know, thousands on your whole website, rolling out your whole campaign and get everything, you know, built and your email list and everything all ready to go and recording lots of professional videos before you've actually discovered or know is there a market? You could do this kind of thing now, right? Even before you plan out your whole campaign. Concierge strategy is taking that to another level. This is where you have a concept for a, a service. So, you know, um, this software will do a particular thing for you. It will plan out your itinerary or, or plan you a, a, a diet or a health plan. So you fill out all these questions and our solution will, you know, give you a, a monthly workout regime. Okay. Now, you may not even have built the software yet. This is why it's lean, right? You're working with what you've got. You've got the intelligence, but you haven't codified that intelligence into the software at this point. So what you're actually doing is you say, here's the questionnaire. If, so who's gonna sign up for this? $99 a month, right? People sign up, great. Send them the questionnaire, questionnaire comes in. A person does it. There's no, no software involved, right? Actual, you know, personal trainer or nutritionist or whatever goes through the thing for each person, sends it back, and we gauge the response of that person. Are they interested in signing up for month two or month three? So what you've done is without investing all that money in building the whole infrastructure for your entire business, is you've tested it as, you know, for, from the outside, from the client's perspective, the customer's perspective, they can't tell, looks the same. Um, but, you know, you're, you're getting that valuable market information, that research information on how people are actually going to act. Because I'll tell you one thing, um, asking people how they would act in a hypothetical situation is almost pointless. I think Steve Jobs famously had no time whatsoever for focus groups. You know, like Henry Ford said, if, if I'd asked the people what they wanted, they'd have said a faster horse. I think it's attributed to him. Um, there's a great story, there's a book called Love Marks that has a story from the, in the, in the 1980s, Sony had the Sports Walkman. So it's a portable cassette player, it was kind of waterproof and it was bright yellow and had a real solid clicking uh, closure. Um, sold very well. Sony wanted to bring out a, like a, a portable beatbox. And they were in two minds, because at that point, all stereos were pretty much black or silver. And they didn't know, should we make it bright yellow? Should we make it like the sports whatever, to make it match the sports Walkman? And, and they had a focus group, but they were clever about it. They had the focus group, they showed people pictures of what it would look like in yellow, what it would look like in black, and, you know, asked them their opinions and this, that, and the other. And they said to people, um, which one would you have? and yellow one, right? More people said, I want a yellow one. In fact, I think it was quite overwhelming, would have a yellow one, uh, than said they wanted the black one. 
And then they said to the focus group, thank you very much. You know, on your way out, there's a gift for you. They had two tables. One had black stereos on it. The other one had yellow stereos. Apparently every single person took a black one. Even though they said in the focus group, yeah, oh yeah, we'd buy yellow. Never, never believe what people say about how they would act in a hypothetical situation. It's much better to know. Uh, another little story I, I'll share with you is that I had a friend who, this is a brick and mortar business, by the way. Um, so he, he was in retail and he would find a product that he thought, that's going to sell. I think that's pretty good. I like that product, right? He did not go out and pay for a shipment of the product. He went out and bought an ad in the newspaper for the product, okay, for a particular price. So he paid £200 for the ad in the paper. Um, you know, send in your check. So we're going back a few years. Send in your check for your amazing, you know, widget. And then he would see how many checks came in. Simple question. You know, in, a, in, the, first, in the, the week or whatever, following the ad going out, if he got enough checks to make a profit in buying the consignment of the goods... He'd cash the checks, go and buy the consignment of the goods and fulfill the orders. If he didn't, if the, if people didn't want it, enough people didn't want it at that price, he'd send them the checks back. And all, he's, all it's cost him is one ad in the newspaper and a few stamps. All done. Okay? So that's the stockless store. And you can do that. You know, you can do that. Do you take any orders? And, and if the orders aren't fulfilled, give them the money back. If you don't find enough activity in the market, you know, but, but you're working with real, real data and that's the beauty of it. Okay, so that's our few little tips on how you can know if there's a market out there. All right, you can take this to a whole nother level, but that's, that's really good for now. So I want to give you an example of a, a real life circuit, real life project that was actually big part of the inspiration for the, the, this whole stuff, uh, you know, the, all the, the marketing strategy and the circuits come, come about. So um, I have a friend and a client that I was working with for a while, um, Bill Betts in Florida, and he's like a worldwide master of Tai Chi and Qigong. So, you know, traditional Chinese energy work and the slow martial art that are very closely connected. Got huge health benefits. Bill's been studying this for decades and he teaches in his own studio in Florida and, and he teaches online. And, you know, he's extremely successful. The students love what he does. We had an idea because, you know, Clever Dick here went on Google uh, on the AdWords research tool, the keyword planner as it is now, and I, I was looking for... SEO niches and stuff like that. And I found, wow, Tai Chi for beginners. Loads of people are searching for Tai Chi for beginners, Bill. Yeah, and, oh, look, the competition isn't that high. I think we can get loads of traffic for Tai Chi for beginners. Get in. Genius move from yours truly. So what did we do? Bill set about creating a series of videos. We had the whole kind of tripwire, you know, thing, free course. Just put in your email, get the free course. And then we were planning out signing up. So spent some money right fortunately not uh, too much um but money was spent on this thing and i think that's actually the last web page that i ever built from scratch in html uh, so we're going back just just a few years now um we published this and crickets right tumbleweed nothing happened and this was around the time that I was starting to work with this, this model. So then when, you know, I had the circuit in my hand and I went back and, and looked at it, uh, this, this uh, campaign, in the context of the circuit, suddenly I got some realizations. So the circuit is the brand, the product, okay? Bill's brand, you know, is great, established, Definitely trustworthy. He's got the the awards and the qualifications, and you know, the, he's got the real world premises and all that kind of stuff. Okay, the product there is no problem. You know, no better 
person, if you're English speaking, to learn Tai Chi off than Bill. Right? Product could be great. Um, the proposition was, uh, you know, you you want to learn Tai Chi. Da, that's what I've been doing forever. Okay. Um, and then we get to the the problem. Right? The problem is somebody wants to learn Tai Chi and doesn't know where to go. And the market is the group of people who have that problem. Okay. So the brand, why should I trust you? Done it, right? These are the key questions that we've gone over. Product, what will it do for me? Okay, and it was this was delivered via the internet, and, and we, you know, we had great insights. Like some people may not be comfortable leaving the house to go to a class. So, you know, this is something you can do from the comfort of your own home, even if you've got, you know, physical issues that maybe prevent you from going to a class. We had it all mapped out. The proposition is why should I choose this? Okay, so why is Bill's Tai Chi for beginners class better than other things? And that was kind of, okay, yeah, we think we've got an angle on this. The problem then, why should I act in the market? Can we reach enough people affordably? That's where the wheels fell off. Why should I act? Now, wherever you are, pretty much in most of the world, there's Tai Chi classes going on. Right? It's extremely popular. Um, Many church halls, you know, well, at some point during the week, somebody's going to be teaching Tai Chi. Uh, gyms all over the place, right? So, you know, is the problem actually very motivating? Why should, why should I sign up for your Tai Chi for Beginners course? Because, you know, what, if you go onto Google, sorry, you go onto YouTube and you type in Tai Chi for Beginners, there's loads of videos on there for free already. And we're thinking about, in terms of a transaction, we want somebody to put in their email address in return for the free videos, right? So, and we're competing against YouTube. Which is quicker? YouTube's quicker. And then the market, can we reach enough people affordably? Where are the people who want to learn Tai Chi from scratch? Where are they? Who are they? Is there anything that's demographic or geographic or anything that ties these people together? Where do they congregate and how can we reach them? There we don't know. It's completely in the mist, right? So at that point, the circuit breaks. It's broken. If you don't know who your market is and how you're going to reach them, then don't go to market, right? So we... we invested time and money in building this thing when we launched it it didn't work and it didn't work because we didn't have a viable circuit simple as that boo sad face this is something pretty cool that I want to show you quickly is combining the circuit with the stack that we talked about before remember the stack is that within your your market there's actually multiple levels, strata within the market. You know, the top level, you've got the done for you consulting where you deliver the service. You go to the, you know, the person and, and it's a lot of, per, of their time is involved. So, you know, it's a high cost. At the bottom, you've got DIY, do it yourself. And this is DIY. This is me recording a video, it goes on the internet. You can look at it, you can apply it to your own stuff. Cool. And it's free. And in the middle, you've got a variety of done with you options where you may get a more kind of personal attention a, a bit of time from the expert um, so that's the stack now how do these two models relate well let's let's have a quick look the brand is the brand is the brand that's the, very important okay now you may have multiple products okay many people do sell mul multiple products so, for example, I may sell a marketing strategy review for however much. I may sell a, um, a marketing strategy you know, quick interview. Or I may do a thorough strategy or a 12-month program right, where I will deliver the, you know, this thing, help you work through it in workshops, and then help monitor it for 12 months. Okay? It's the same me... It's marketing strategy, but it's presented in multiple different ways. Okay, so what's actually delivered can, can differ. But look at this. You can have multiple propositions. Okay. 
And you can have multiple propositions to suit different levels in the market. Okay, This video is my DIY solution to the marketing strategy question. Right? The problem is, how do we sort this stuff out, you know, do it in a, in a, how do we um, get our marketing strategy right so that we maximize our chances of success before we go to market, okay? That's the problem. Lots of different people can have that problem. The market for this problem can go all the way from the DIY, yeah, people who've got more time, don't want to invest money, right, and want to do it for themselves, all the way up to there are people in this market who are not watching this video right now, right? Who, you know, who really need marketing strategy and need it to be right. And they've got urgency and they've got budget and whatever, right? But they haven't got the time. They don't want to do it themselves. All perfectly valid. And then you've got everything in between. So the market is a continuum. The problem is like a continuum as well. I think you've got some arrows. Yeah, so, you know, there's... There's movement, there's range within both the market and the problem, and that makes sense because market and problem are very, very closely linked. Okay, and then I can have multiple propositions that link my multiple products to those different flavors or types or intensities of problem for different levels or layers within the market as well. Remember, like we said about the stack, that people can move up and down within that market. Their problems can evolve over time type of problem that you have when you're starting out with your own small business you know as a side thing because you've got a main job is, is one thing but when it takes off two years later and you're you know doing better you've got different kinds of problems could still be in the same problem space all to do with like marketing strategy but you know this could apply to anything it does apply to anything right so you can have your know, multiple propositions multiple types of problem. They're all related, right? So it's, you know, I don't want to put lots of separate boxes because it's the kind of same kind of a problem, but at different levels in the, in the market. Okay, so that's the circuit, but everything, all of that stuff is tied together. It's all related. It's all part of one thing right this is your thing this is you know the thing that you are setting out to be the person for the most prominent person for the most influential person for or the or brand okay so it's like what is your thing and when you keep it together th that market right the market for marketing strategy for example all fits in with if my thing is marketing strategy right, then it, it wraps around that market. And people can go up and down in that market. They might leave the market, other people could come in, but they move up and down, but they're still within the marketing strategy problem space, right? So that's how the circuit and the stack mix together. Just a few thoughts then on finding your thing. Um, the three Ps, it mentioned the golden triangle, right? What are you, what do you love to do what can you do well and is, is there a market for it? Passion, proficiency, profit. I think that it's much better to do something that you love. Find a job you love and never work a day in your life. Okay, so if, if, you're, go, if you're going to work in an area, then make it something that, that you really care about because it doesn't feel like work when you do that. Proficiency, you know, you're not going to sell something you can't do well. I was talking to a guy yesterday, works for a company that makes valves. Um, and he says, I wouldn't buy one of our valves. And I said, so you're not in sales then? He went, no. <laughs> but, you know, he, he doesn't think they make very good valves. And that's why they've moved into smaller premises. And um, is it profitable? Is there a market for it? And we've already looked at some techniques for finding out whether there is any market before you, you know, you go to it. Um, <clears throat> look to your past to find what truly inspires you. So are there dreams, are there stories or songs or movies or whatever, things that have always, that have, some have stuck with you, they strike a chord with you and they've stayed with you. Right? And then ask yourself, well, what is it about those things? 
And I keep, you know, when you look back, it's really remarkable how you find certain things that stand out in your life and for some reason are stuck in your mind, right? We haven't got time to start to explore that right now, but you know, that this is a, a technique that's really, really worked for me for finding out what, um, what my thing is. And I, I've talked about the fact I'm into marketing strategy and ethical marketing, and I've done SEO and lots of other different things, but they're all ex an expression of the same thing. And I'm into you know, advancing greenhouse technology. Right now, what's, how can they be related? But I had a realization just last week that actually those things are related because it's all about freeing the human spirit. So for me, that's my motivation. It's actually freeing the human spirit. Um, freeing people from doing jobs they don't like, freeing people from you know, having to work for the man, being stuck in a job you hate, doing something you don't enjoy. Uh, and you know, marketing strategy is a very, very powerful way of doing that. It's like you know, what I do, I look at the world and figure out what's wrong with it or what might work better. Do that. You know? So just a few months ago, I was working with how can we make things better as being my, my tagline. How can we together make things better? Right? And that's, that's all for me. So yours will be different. And the clues are there in your past and they're also there in your future. Which sounds a bit weird, but the fact is, think about what inspires you. If you, if you, you know, shut your eyes and think, okay, fast forward a year or two years or five years. Right? How old am I? Where do I live? I'm bouncing out of bed on a Monday morning. Right? How do I look? Um, do everything I have to do and I'm going to walk into my what? Store, office, castle, shed, greenhouse. What, what is it? You know, you, it's like the, the, your dream for the future is already there inside you. So just, just allow yourself to dream. Okay? And that's finding your thing. Another thing you might want to do is try the decision maker. And I'll put you the link for this as well. And we'll look at this now. I made this tool years and years ago when I was on a train journey. Okay, so <coughs> this is how it works. You can, you can clear it. So you can start with a completely blank one. And you can add criteria or add options. But I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so this is a great thing just to help you choose between different things that might matter to you. So you've got uh, the criteria down the side. Passion, proficiency, and profit. So, you know, what's most important is, you know, passion... Profit might be, for me, maybe less important. And you could do, you know, I want to be a lion tamer or I might want to be a lumberjack. Yeah. And then you can give yourself a score out of 10. So, you know, my passion for lion taming is six. My passion for lumberjacking is seven. My proficiency is, you know, two or eight. And the profit is, you know, four or five. And then bang, it tells you a weighted score for these things for each of those options. So, you know, if you've got a few ideas about things you may like to do and focus in as your narrow thing, um, yeah, just use this tool. And then anytime you do it, you can just copy that particular link and it will fill it in how you found it. So, you know, copy that link, bookmark it, save it somewhere. So, there we go. So, in summary, what we are doing at this point is we're asking ourselves, are we ready to proceed to plan a campaign? And the circuit, you can just say to yourself, you know, very, very quickly, it's, it's a great test. Am I really clear about the brand? Am I really clear about the product, about the proposition, about the problem and, and about the market? Right. And if you're not, then there's, there's the whole big questionnaire that you can go to. Right. Um, and if, if you go through the questionnaire, it, and it will really take you, I think, between two and four hours to do it, if you want to go through it, um, but definitely worth doing, unless you know absolutely sure, and there is no doubt in your mind, that you are clear about these five elements, and that they are strong, present, powerful, distinct, right? The circuit will show you the answer. The circuit would have shown me that Tai Chi for beginners was never going to fly. Right? It would have saved us time and money, and we could have then gone, okay, well, how can we change that? Which of these elements can we play with? 
to change the whole picture. And um, yeah, that could have made a huge difference in that particular case, okay? But the circuit will show you the answer, right? Because either you know, if you're honest with yourself, either you know these five things, yeah, we got those things. Yeah, we're excited about it, right? Or you're unclear. And if you're not ready, it's okay, don't panic. The time isn't right to take that particular concept or idea or strategy to market. So don't take it to market if the time isn't right. Stop, review, think again. And we're gonna be doing more work about you know, how you can actually amplify, really you know, turn up um, or boost those particular things in the, in the circuit. It may be that one of those elements is kind of weak, but that if you step back and say, well, how can we, you know, is there a, a, a better market that, that we can go for? Or is there a, a more motivating, stronger, uh, more intense problem? Or is the product wrong? You know, should we actually, instead of just trying to sell this little ebook, should we be selling, you know, a 12 month program that's going to, with qualification at the end of it, right? It's all kinds of ways that you can take something and, you know, just turn it up to 11. Okay, all, all good stuff, so, but don't panic. That's the whole point. The point of, of stopping and reviewing and validating is we are not gonna move forward until we know that we've got something worth moving forward with because no tactic will help you, okay? Um, I do recommend that you do the questionnaire. Do it. You can do this for anything, and the circuit doesn't just apply to marketing strat strategy. It could apply to an email that you send out, right? What's the brand? What's the uh, the product that I'm promoting? What's the proposition? Is there a problem? You know, is there a market? Who am I talking to? Just holding these things in your mind can apply to all kinds of um, exercises uh, within anything you do in, in marketing or business or communications or um, anything that you're trying to persuade anyone about. So you can go to benhunt.com slash circuit. That will redirect you to the Google Doc. Uh, you can't edit the Google Doc yourself, but if you're signed into Google, you can click File, make a copy. You can make your own copy of the document. However, my advice is this to you. I would print it out, use a little bit of dead tree, print it out, stick a staple through it, or put it in a binder, something like that. It's going to be, you know, a couple of dozen pages, probably. Um, <coughs> and then lock yourself in a room and go, go through that stuff. I would, for me, I like to work in pencil. Right, but take pen or pencil. If there's you know several people, get together, make a make an event out of it. Go through and answer every single darn question, every single one, even if the answer is N A, not applicable or whatever. Right, write something down, because I tell you, in my experience of going through this, there's always questions in there where you will you will say to yourself, oh yeah, yeah, I I know why that question's in there. It's a great question. I like it. Because the circuit, by the way, is, is my collection of every question that I can find, that I've found over about two, three years now that I've been developing it, um, that can help to inform one of the five elements. All right? And I added a question even just last week. It's because someone suggested it. She said, uh, what is it that, that really drives you crazy about the other competitors or products in your, in your marketplace? It's like... That's a great question. Yeah, we'll add that in, right? That's, this is open source stuff. So yeah, print it out, go through it, write something down for everything. Because if you find one of those questions and you go, great question, what's the next one, right? That's the question you need to answer. That's probably highlighting something that you know you're taking a bit of a shortcut on or you know, just don't. Put something down for everything. If you can't answer a question, find out why not. This stuff's important, okay? So that's it, validation. The, the crucial pivotal step in any, uh, creating any marketing strategy. So don't go to market if you don't know why, if you don't know exactly what you're doing and give yourself the, you know, the, the gracious space to say, okay, if we're not 100% clear, stop. You know, switch engine off um, and let's review. Let's talk it over. Let's think differently because it's quick, it's easy, and it's cheap to do that right now. Okay, thanks very much for your time.